Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video I am super excited to bring you the sparkling garami. We've had them in our fish room now for quite some time. Really love this fish. I hope you do too. Thanks for being here. So here we have the sparkling garami. This particular tank that we're looking at is actually a 12 gallon long. It's an unusual size because it's actually 36 inches long. So three feet long, even though it's just a 12 gallon and that allows us to keep more of the sparkling garamis in a relatively small volume of water. Now what's cool about these fish is they come from Southeast Asia and the waters in which they're normally found tend to be puddles and ponds and rice paddies and so the water is very slow moving and that's something that you want to try to replicate when you keep these fish. Now size, the really nice thing is they stay relatively small. They're going to get to be about max out around an inch and a half or so. The females are going to be slightly smaller. You can see the color here. It's pretty cool. They have kind of a brownish tan, but so much interesting color with the iridescence, the slight purple and the red and a little bit of blue throughout their body. And they've got those pretty blue eyes as well. And I think that's what really attracts people to keeping these fish. The fact that they have a relatively small size, they do have some interesting color. And for the most part, they're very peaceful. They, I very rarely see them chasing other fish. Now they can be a little bit aggressive towards one another. And that's something that we have to keep in mind. Uh, lifespan, you, can, you might be able to get five years or so out of your sparkling grommies if you keep them in a nice habitat. When it comes to tank mates, in this tank that you're looking at, we have a number of fish in here. Uh, we have celestial pearl daniels. We have some lamp eye rasboras. We actually have a couple pea puffers in here that has worked out just fine, as well as some bristlenose plecos and even some mystery snails. And so usually what you want to do with your sparkling garamis is try to keep them with peaceful community fish that don't get very large. And so like I said, the celestial pearl daniels are great, but pretty much all of the smaller rasboras are probably going to work out okay. Cory cats would work out just fine. A lot of the smaller tetras, like maybe your neons, your ember tetras, your gold tetras, those types of fish that are going to be about the same size usually work out pretty well. If you're looking for algae eating fish, otocinclus would work fine. Like I said, we have them in with bristlenose plecos without any issues whatsoever. You could also keep them with pencil fish. That might be kind of a cool, unusual thing to do. The one thing I might want to consider staying away from are fish that are going to be really, really fast moving that might stress out your sparkling garamis. And so we tend not to keep them with a lot of the live bears like endlers and guppies and mollies. Not necessarily because I think there's going to be an aggression issue. It's more of an activity thing that I'm concerned about as opposed to the fish bullying one another. I definitely wouldn't keep these fish with most types of cichlids either. Now, when it comes to water parameters, they're going to do pretty well somewhere around the mid 70s up to about 80 degrees. We generally keep our tanks right around 78 degrees and don't have any issues. pH can be fairly, it's a fairly wide range, usually around you know, above six and a half, less than eight. Our water is actually at the higher level of that. We actually have water around eight to 8.2. They breed in that water. They're happy in that water. But ideally, the closer you can be to neutral, the better off you're going to be. Water hardness, again, it's a relatively large range, anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees on your carbonate hardness and your general hardness. We are, again, at the upper level of that at around 10 degrees hardness. And like most tropical fish, you do want to make sure that your tank is fully cycled before you add these fish to a fish tank, which means no ammonia, no nitrite. And we try to keep our nitrates less than 20 parts per million. Now, when it comes to what you feed these guys, they're not particularly picky, at least we haven't found them to be. We generally feed our fish North Fin foods. And so for these particular fish, they primarily get North Fin community flake, which they like a lot. Sometimes they will eat the North Fin, uh, the, the smaller pellets. They also, as you're going to see here shortly, they really love live baby brine shrimp. And so that is a treat that they absolutely go crazy for. Frozen brine shrimp, the Frozen blood worms, if we feed that, usually they are going to be uh, cut up into smaller pieces. Tank size for a single sparkling garami, you could probably get away with a 5-gallon, uh, 10 gallon to 20 gallons is going to be better. If you want to keep multiples, something to keep in mind is it's best usually to have a male with multiple females. Sometimes the males will chase one another around. Even the females, as you're going to see when we look at the, the breeding pair that we had, 
around breeding time, even the females will chase other fish around. So if you want to keep multiple males, it's best if you have at least a 20 gallon long to do that. Again, for us in this particular tank, we actually have multiple males in a 12 gallon, but the tank is three feet long. And so that provides a lot of cover for having multiple males in the tank. Now, when it comes to the decorations, as you can see here, these are fish that really love a heavily planted tank. They will hang out under the leaves. They especially like, just like we're seeing here, the shaded areas. They feel very comfortable in those, those areas where there's a lot less light. And so you'll often find them hanging out under plants, under driftwood. If you really want your sparkling garamis to come out, if you give them a place to feel comfortable, that's a lot more likely to happen. And so we've got live plants in this particular tank. We have driftwood, a little bit of rock work. The substrate really, color of the su substrate matters, but not necessarily whether you're dealing with sand or gravel. We like to keep our sparkling garamis on a dark substrate. You can see a dark background. I just think it shows off some of those nice, really pretty blues and purples and reds a lot better than when we have them on lighter substrate. Something else to consider when it comes to keeping sparkling garamis, try to give them some space at the surface of the water so that they can do gas exchange. These have a labyrinth organ, just like your other garamis and your bed is doing, so they will gulp air from the surface. And if you have the entire surface covered with like, let's say frog bit or salvinia, that can be problematic. We do have some frogbit and salvinia in this tank, but it doesn't cover the entire surface. So they still have space to go up to the surface gulp air and come back down. So just something to keep in mind. Now, here you can start to see they are eating their live baby brine. As I said before, this is one of the highlights for them. They really enjoy it. They get really excited, as do all the fish in the tank. It's just a great snack when you have smaller fish. By the way, if you want more information on how to hatch out live baby brine, I will put that in the description below. Also, if you're interested in purchasing sparkling garamis and there's not a source near you, check out our channel sponsor, Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. They usually have them in stock. They're healthy, they look good, and so you could check them out. Again, they are a channel sponsor, but they have some really nice nano fish. Now, when it comes to the mating process, this is where things get pretty interesting and I'm going to show you uh, this process in a couple seconds. Obviously you need a male and a female. The other thing that you're going to have to be careful of once again is you want to have a tank where you don't have a lot of really strong flow. So if you have a hang on back filter that's kicking out a lot of water and we get a lot of surface agitation, that's going to prevent the male from being able to to create his bubble nest. And so these fish, just like other grammies and just like bettas, the males make a bubble nest, and then that is the place where the eggs will eventually be deposited. I was actually lucky enough, I'm sorry for the video footage, I caught it on my phone, but here we have the male, you're gonna see him wrap himself around the female. This is the mating process, so he's already built his bubble nest. He will wrap himself around the female, she will release an egg that he will fertilize. He will take that egg into his mouth and then he will put it up in his bubble nest as you can see him doing here. This process can go on for a long period of time. I didn't film the entire thing, but they were probably in this particular instance, they were doing this exact procedure for about 15 or 20 minutes and that can actually happen at multiple times in a day. And so once that happens, usually it's best to remove the female put her in her own tank, allow the male to care for the bubble nest until the fry or until the eggs hatch and you start to see a little bit of free swimming fry and then you can remove the male as well. The likelihood that he eats the fry, it happens, especially early on when they're not used to mating, but it, it's always a good idea. Definitely remove the female, not that she's necessarily going to prey on the eggs and on the fry, but it's just... It, reduces some of the stress of the male because now he's got to protect that area. And like I said, once the, the fry start to hatch, you can remove the male as well. Now the fry will eat a lot of the infusoria and a lot of the stuff that's already in the tank if it's well established. And then usually after about a week or so, they are ready to start eating live baby brine as well. It's going to take a couple days for the eggs to hatch. So you got a little bit of time if you ever see this behavior going on. But it really is an, a very interesting behavior. And like I said, the mating pair is going to be pretty rough on especially any other sparkling garamis in the tank. So it's a really good idea to remove other sparkling garamis as soon as you see a mating pair form. So sparkling garamis, if you have a chance to check them out, 
it's definitely worth it if you've got the right size tank. You just have to be a little bit careful of the choices you make in terms of the tank mates. A planted tank with some low flow and you're going to be really enjoying these fish, I would say, for a long time. There really aren't any specific challenges except for one, their size, and just making sure that you can provide for them the, inhabit, the, the area that they need and the ecosystem that they need. And like I said, if you want more information on how to hatch live baby brine, I'm going to put that in the upper right-hand corner. If you want more information on some interesting tank mates, I will put that in the lower right-hand corner as well as in the description below. Appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.